Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got um, another mini PC here, and this one has no power. I say, rustling it loudly into the microphone. Uh, what are you? Ah, oh, it's another minis forum. Okay, it's another minis forum, everyone. Uh, this is a X35G. No power, customer has already had a look at it, and they reckon there's a MOSFET in there that's getting very hot with power connected. Not sure if it's a MOSFET or control problem. Um, so uh, we're going to be looking for another short circuit in this. But remember, uh, anytime you're given something that someone else has looked at and they go, I think it's this, that and the other, take that with a pinch of salt because they might be completely wrong. Um, but chip getting hot sounds like a short to me. Let's open it up. See after the, the intro is the word I'm looking for. See after the intro. Okay, right, it looks like a sticker has been removed from over here, so that's probably the MOSFETs that they're talking about. These are also the D these are going to be the DC in MOSFETs, I would imagine, because, you know, that's the DC jack, so those are probably the DC in MOSFETs, so if there is a short circuit, yeah, these guys would be getting hot, because it would be pulling a lot of current. Um, so, uh, let's dive under the microscope and take a closer look and see if there's anything obvious. So here's our DC jack, and if we have a look at the back, you can see that the center pin comes down to pin 3 on the board there. Um, pin 2 looks like it's a side pin there. So that's either a sense pin or another ground, and then you've got pin 1 that is going down to ground. You can see that is common onto that screw hole there. So pin 3 is what we care about. And pin 3 immediately comes down into this inductor here. So that inductor there, that's just going to smooth out any sort of sparks and sudden inrush um, and EMI and that kind of thing. There's been some heat there. That guy's, had, that guy's a little bit toasty. Hmm, just a thought. Anyway, so we come down through here, then we go through this MOSFET, and then we go through this MOSFET. Be gone. And then we go into a bunch of veers and we go down into what will become the main power rail. So is that is that shorted, first of all? Put the multimeter into a resistance mode. And I shall put my black probe on this screw hole up here as a ground. Eh. And let's just see if the output from all of this is shorted. And it is. So we have a main power rail short. So, and that's a that's a deep short, 0.3 ohms. That's um that's good. Love to see it. Um cool. Alright. So um short circuit somewhere on the board on the main power rail. Uh okay, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take off this cooler here and um, get some more access. Uh we wanna start doing some checks to see if we've got a we wanna double check if we shorted through the CPU or something horrible like that. I don't think we will be, because if we were shorted through the CPU, I'd expect to see like um, like one or two ohms of resistance or something like that. So, you know, looking looking good so far. Uh, I could have checked this like there. That's V call there, I think. Whatever. I'm taking this apart. Also, I think the CPU's got a... Nah, does the cooler need to come off? Maybe. I can't tell if these CPU cooler screws are going all the way through or not. I'll take it all apart. Ah. The long boy CPU. Right, you just moved. Do I just get you for free? Ooh. Ew, a hard drive. Oh good, it does have an NVMe on the back of it as well. 
So I'm going to look at this area now. This is CPU V core. And the way I know that is that um, we've got the CPU here and somewhere near to the CPU, you're going to find a power supply for the CPU with a bunch of inductors and probably MOSFETs or power stages. Um, and, you know, we've got some MOSFETs over here. That might be a secondary rail or something, but it's kind of small, you know, a big capacitor. But like here, immediately there's a stack of big inductors and what look like either DR MOSFETs or power stages. So like that's how you're going to spot vCore because it's going to be a massive cluster of power supply related stuff next door to the CPU with big old traces that go into the CPU. So that's how you just instantly know where it is. So let's measure the inputs around here and we can see if any of those guys have gone short circuit and caused this problem. With the layout of this, we've got two sets of pads coming up here. One side will be ground, one side will be the main power rail. And we've got, we've got some help here. We've actually got a positive marked for these big capacitor pads. So the way this is set up here is we've got very large footprints to put big tantalum capacitors here and here. However, instead they've opted to put just a couple of um, NLCCs there, some ceramic capacitors. Uh, presumably they decided that's all that was needed, but that, that's why it looks a little bit how you're doing, um, but that's okay. At any rate, we've got a plus there, so we know this is going to be positive, which means this is going to be the main power rail bringing in power to this MOSFET. And uh, we also know that that is going to be a positive as well, because if this was a positive, then these two would be connected. Usually, you expect to see a mirrored layout. So if it's positive here, then they would put the positive there, so they don't have to do two sets of pads, but whatever. Anyway, so... Um, if we check here, we're going to find that we're shorted here as well, which we are. So now what I want to do is I want to measure on the other side. So let's measure at this inductor and see if we have the same resistance. And we don't, not by a long shot. It's like 90 ohms. Damn, that's high. Fair enough. I'm going to check the other ones just for good measure. Y yeah, lots. Huh, fair enough. I expected low resistance there. Like, I expected a couple of ohms? Yeah, 90 there as well. All right, fair enough. I mean, I'm not complaining. It's good. It means that we're not shorted through the CPU. If we saw exactly the same resistance at these inductors as we were seeing at the main power rail, it would mean that in all probability, one of these guys had failed and become shorted through. And that would be our path to ground, because usually the CPU will have a very low internal resistance, which means if one of these guys goes short circuit, then you're finding a path to ground through the low resistance of the CPU. And that is basically game over unless you're Superstar Rockstar Pro. Um, so we're looking, we're looking good here. Um, so now... With a short on the main power rail, that could be going to a lot of different places because the main power rail goes to a lot of different places. So um, we're very, very likely to be doing power injection now. Um, so I'm going to go through my power injection checklist. So firstly, why am I injecting power? Well, we have discovered a short on the main power rail, but there's lots of different places on the motherboard where that short could be going to. Um, so we need power injection to reveal where the short has occurred. Have we actually found a short and do we know where it is? Well, yes, we found a short and it's on the main power rail. So that is fine. We know where we're going to inject power. We're going to inject like here on the main power rail. Okay. Is there anything else that we could do to find the problem without having to inject power? Well, we could just look at the board. So let's do that. So I'm going to start by just staring at the board and seeing if I can spot anything obvious. And I'm mainly looking at all of the capacitors. I'm looking for any capacitors that look like cracked or just out of place. It's really common to see that some of the capacitors might be darkened or tarnished, but we're looking for really obvious stuff. Might not be able to see it with the naked eye, but... Literally just looking at the board is a good start. What's that? What's, what's going on with you down there? That one looks like it has a spot on it. Microscope. 
Pretty sus. That's going to be on the main power rail because these are VRMs. This spot here, these are, again, you can tell they're VRMs because we've got inductors, MOSFETs, and, you know, power and lots of capacitors and stuff. What are those guys doing? That might be our, um, there's a good chance this is the 3.3 um, .3 and 5 volt power rail, respectively, one way around or the other. Uh, that would be my guess. Is there anything on the other side of the board? The SSD. Um, but yeah, that's, those are going to be fed from the main power rail, and that guy looks mighty suspicious to me. Uh, I'm going to take a stab at that. I'm just going to rip that straight off the board and see if we get lucky. Right, hot air on, 400 degrees C, maximum airflow. Bust you off. Blow around the area, warm up the board a little bit. wonder what that is. That's not an electrolyte. Might just be some old glue or something like that. Might be nothing. We're on big power planes here, so these guys are going to be stubborn. I should probably have touched this with the um, uh, soldering iron first. Uh, it's on its way, though. Right. Do you feel lucky, kiddo? Well, do ya? Oh, look at that. And we're no longer shorted. Everyone in the comments keeps shouting at me, going, Oh, just inject power. Oh, you're overthinking it. Oh. No injection, baby. Just use your eyes, use some common sense. You don't always have to get violent. All right. Let's have a look at these two capacitors. Which one is the dead one? I think it's this guy. Let's see if I can get a measurement on this without sending it into the shadow realm. Eh. All right, that's dead short circuit-ish. So that one's kill. That one goes into the naughty capacitors pile, the naughty capacitors. Right, so this one is probably okay, and I'm going to try and measure it to see what its rating is. Cool, it's not shorted, I don't think. Come on. Any second now, it's going to teleport. All right. It's not shorted. Reset the multimeter. Man, my kingdom for a multimeter that doesn't time out. It's so annoying. In the unlikely event I actually forget to turn it off. Man, I'll just put some more double A's in it. Alright, so capacitance. What say you? It's a 10 microfarad? Yes, 10 microfarad. Absolute classic. It says like 8.5, 8.9, something like that. Um, capacitors are never spot on, and they don't really need to be. As long as they're in the right ballpark, it's fine. That's near as damn it, a 10 microfarad capacitor. It was kind of low, though. Considering how cheap these things are, I will just replace both of them, because why not? Right, these are 0604s, unless I'm mistaken, but I'm going to put the big boys on there. Whoop. Just because the big boys will be a little bit stronger. Oh, you know what? Those are the correct size, actually. It's fine. Uh, cool. Let's get under the microscope. I'm going to clear off this old solder first. I could just hot air these on, but um, soldering iron hero practice is good.
There we go. Fun fact, you can wick with hot air and it works just fine. And your hot air station has an awful lot more wattage behind it than your uh, soldering iron does. Just less direct. Now let's keep working while uh, we're going to literally strike while the iron's hot. What are these pads, man? What are these pads? Ah, oh, balls. I need some uh, flux down there. There we go. Clean that up with some alcohol. Oh, I just put my finger in the thermal paste on the CPU. I hate it. Oh no, it's that horrible paste that just smears everywhere. This is why everyone hates ceramic. Cool. That looks very pretty. Let's just make sure we're not shorted because there were there was an extra footprint un directly underneath the pads and I've got no idea what that was connected to. Probably should have checked it beforehand so I knew which side to bias these onto. But uh, as long as we're not shorted, it doesn't really matter. So, uh, black probe on ground. That's a gr This side is ground. Cool, zero. And this side is positive. Oops, I fell off. Uh, 50 mega, 45 mega ohms, lots of resistance, no short circuits, lovely. Alright, so one more time just for good measure, let's just go back to the original spot we started on and just make sure that still looks like how we're expecting it to, which is to say very high resistance. Yeah, 30 mega ohms, no problem, and um, we'll just check in the middle of this all this stuff as well just in case yeah infinite and app at the inputs 13 kilo ohms 13 kilo ohms is kind of low 14 kilo ohms that's low but it's okay um it's unusual to see the dc input that low but it's um it, i've seen laptops be that low and work just fine on hp laptops not recent ones, but um, uh, certainly years ago on HP laptops, it was very common to see like 15 kilo ohms at the DC jack. So yeah, that's probably down to um, that's probably down to just some resistances elsewhere, and we could have a look where. But I don't super care. Like there's a resistor there, you know, could be that guy. Don't know. Doesn't matter. It's not shorted. That's what matters. Right, let's lob some thermal paste onto this and put it all back together again. Oh, that's the end of the tube. It's good enough. Oh god, this ceramic, you'll be the death of me. I hate it. This seems like as good a time as any to talk about the MOSFET that the customer thought it was going to be and why they were wrong about that. So finding a chip that is getting hot um, and sort of going, oh, that must be the culprit, 
Um, it's certainly a good place to be starting. If you find something that is burning up, that's definitely a symptom. Uh, but also, remember, when you have a short circuit, um, the thing that is at fault needs to have a path to ground. And if you remember when we were looking at those DC in MOSFETs, they didn't have a path to ground. The power was going straight through them and then going elsewhere in the board. So we know that those DC in MOSFETs could not have been the problem from the start because they don't have a path to ground. So the reason why they were getting hot is because they were passing current through them into the main power rail. Um, and they're not... And, you know, those are kind of small MOSFETs. What, do you, what power supply is this? 19 volt, 2 amp. Damn, that's a 40 watt power supply. Huh, if you say so. So when you see a hot component like that, it's not necessarily going to be the fault. But it is reasonable to assume that even if it's not at fault, it's probably connected to the fault. You're in the right, you're in the right area. And in this case, the right area was the main power rail. Although that doesn't narrow it down much because the main power rail goes to literally everywhere on the board. Um, but yeah, as I say, don't jump straight in and remove the hot component unless it actually has a path to ground. The capacitors that we often so that we so often see on this channel getting removed, nine times out of ten, capacitors do go to ground because they're usually bypassing. They don't always go to ground. You can have capacitors that are filter capacitors and such. Um, so again, you know, capacitor doesn't always go to ground, just most of the time they go to ground. They should, they certainly do on pretty much any kind of power rail, which is where we're often looking at faults. So yeah, make of that what you will, kind of a clunky explanation, but whatever. Right, let's power this thing on. Right, power. Blue light. Aha! And we have a post screen. Minis for them. And is it going to start booting Windows? Or whatever it's running? It is. There we go. Right, the battle is fought and the war is won. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Um, nice, easy one. Another good example of just using your eyes and using some logical thinking before you just dive straight into power injection. I mean, power injection would have worked. You know, we could have stabbed it with uh, with a probe, with the um, thermal camera out, and that capacitor would have lit up. But we didn't have to, and that also means that we didn't take any. We didn't risk hitting it with a probe and then slipping with the probe. You know, whenever you're doing any kind of more serious work like power injection and stuff like that, there is an inherent risk that you will cock it up. And again, there's going to be pros out there in the comments that will be like, I never make mistakes. Yeah, sure thing, buddy. I tell you what, I could not have made a mistake there because I didn't do the power injection in the first place. So I minimized the risk, playing it safe. And, you know, again, if you're pro, then you take risks where you want to. But when we're trying to teach people and we're trying to learn, we do anything we can to mitigate possible risks. That's my lecture done. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.